Growing up in Oakland, <laughs> let me put it to you this way. I had my first gun when I was in elementary. Well, my first experience in solitary confinement was in San Quentin. I'm not saying glorify prison, jail, none of that. Because for me, truthfully, it was a waste of 11 years. But I'm here to say, you better find another way, and I did it. So you don't have to do it, no boy. neighborhood I lived in, you could look out the window, see somebody dead on the sidewalk. Khalif means sharp, intelligent, fierce in Swahili, because I read and write Swahili, speak it fluently. I had my mother and I had a stepfather, and I was the middle child of two other children, and I was the black sheep. I was the one that got beaten and just got did bad. Football, wrestling, and track, and I excelled in all three, all city in all three, was senior class president. And then my senior year, my older brother died. Messing around with a gun, he killed himself. My second year at Fresno, I got in trouble. I went to the coach, because my money was funny. I couldn't pay my rent. I didn't have enough money for food. So I went to Coach Sweeney, rest in peace, he died this 2013. And I asked him, could I get some money, you know, advance on my scholarship? So Coach Sweeney looked me in the eye and i never forget it. He said, sir, a man gotta do what a man gotta do to survive in this world. And me being, me being from the streets of Oakland, I took that in a negative way. So I went out and committed some robberies, ended up doing going to prison and doing seven years in prison. To San Quentin, that's when I started to really blossom and grow because I was eating Dunkin' Sticks, Honey Buns, Top Ramen and Tuna Spreads, and I was huge. I was 230. There wasn't no need for no steroids. The only time I heard of somebody taking steroids in prison was at Tehachapi Prison I was at. And a big white guy, he was young too, he was like, I got some D-ball. I'm like, what the fuck is that? He like, oh, it make you big. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm the biggest on the yard. What I need some fucking, and, and it's $20 a pill? You, man, I go get four cases of Top Ramen for that. And so, it wasn't no need for me to do all that because I was already swole as a motherfucker. So 1997, the word got out that the weights were getting took. I was in San Quentin. It was unbelievable. The weights were like our God, you know, and I had one workout partner, big as me, could have been a bodybuilder too. And so we were stressed out. So we was hoping that this was just a rumor. So one day, 
on the yard, everybody screaming like, hey, they, they, they coming to take the weights. And so they had inmates that were low level to help them, put, help the correctional officers put the weights on trucks. So we start throwing rocks at them and socks and all types oranges, milks, everything. We were stressed out. So at that time, when the rumor had hit, I had devised a way in case they did take the weights, how to improvise. I said life ain't fair. I said life ain't fair. Life ain't fair. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. Lock my body, but my mind is free. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. So let's get it on. Same song we sing, confined in the bank. Little brother doing the same thing. Trying to make a change, devil seem to cling. Trying to shake it, trying to make it. Sometimes I can't take it. The snakes get. How you feel good? How you feel good? Mischievous. In man we trust. Or in God we trust. In man we trust. Or in God we trust. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. You can lock my body, but my mind is free. I had one of my workout partners on my shoulders doing squats, and the correctional officers didn't want that. They didn't want us to do anything like weights no more. And so I told them, hey, send me to the hole. If I can't lift weights, if I can't work out, send me to the hole where I can do what I want to in my cell. And so that's what happened. I lost 90 days for working out. And, you know, when I tell people that story, they're like, you lost time for working out? And I'm like, yeah, so all you spoiled motherfuckers worry about what your gym got. You know, oh, my gym don't have this and that. Hey, motherfucker, I lost time from the streets for working out with water bags and using people for weights. So my mother come pick me up, we go to Costco. So she like, baby, get whatever you want. So me, <laughs> being institutionalized, I go get five cases of Top Robin and a big box of tuna. She like, baby, you, you out of prison? What you get that for? I'm like, shit, I don't know what else to eat. Me, truthfully, it was a waste of 11 years. And the reason I say that is because I was dealing with robbers, killers, stealers, the most conniving people on the earth. And yes, I tried to bring positivity to them with knowledge, fitness, and trying to get these guys to look at life in a different way. But 99.9% .9 of the guys that I dealt with in there went back or they dead. My sole purpose on this earth is to help the kids. I started my foundation, XCon to Icon, where I'm going into juvenile halls, prisons, CYAs. Uh, I'm going to the inner city schools where people don't want to go. And I'm showing these kids that, hey, you don't have to use the negativity that you involved in in your community for negativity. So I did my first competition, it was the Orange County Classic. And I took first place, heavyweight. From then on, my life improved. Now his future is gone because he chose to rob When all he had to do was go and get his punk as a job So take notes if you will, this ain't no ordinary rhyme It's a message my friends, only losers do time We're making history right now Hey, we found you baby, the copter!